could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. 95.7 The Game is an equal opportunity employer and we encourage local community organizations to refer qualified applicants to us. You can receive The Game and Odyssey job vacancy information by contacting Human Resources at 415-765-4011 or by emailing sfhr at odyssey.com. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMC FM at HD1 San Francisco. An Odyssey station. I want him to hear. This is the pregame show. Your early morning shot of sports on 95.7 The Game. Come on! All right. Let's try to not break the mic this time. We'll try to do that today on the pregame show. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I'm your host, Joe Spadoni. The mic has been fixed. We had to rally yesterday. First five minutes of the show. Apparently, I was sabotaged. I was set up to fail. Willard knew it was going to break. Didn't tell anyone. Could have told TJ. Come on, Mark. Leave me hanging. Of course, he was out yesterday. Larry Kruger filling in, doing a hell of a job. Him and Dan Dibley. I feel set up. I feel betrayed. Man. You just, you think you know your hosts. Used to run the board for Willard and Dibs, and now just setting me up to fail with broken mics dangling on last last threads, if you will. Speaking of dangling on their last threads, that is not the San Francisco Giants. It's quite the opposite. Fully treaded. Ready to rock. Up in Toronto. Patrick Bailey. The rookie of the year. In the rookie of the year running. I should say. But he's having a rookie of the year type season. And he should just get consideration. What he's doing as a catcher. Is damn impressive. And something I haven't seen since. Wait for it. Buster Posey on the squad. Not saying he is Buster. I'm saying I haven't seen this type of production from a young kid at the catching position since Buster Posey. All due respect to Joey Bart, he's not that dude behind the dish. Quite honestly, at the plate, I'm not so sure either. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with him as we get closer and closer to the trade deadline. But the Giants, they get another one yesterday up in Toronto. They improve to 45 34 look at them bounce back after a loss on Sunday and this isn't an easy team the Toronto Blue Jays have studs left and right they go at the opener yesterday the Giants Ryan Walker in some trouble early in that first inning works around giving up two hits to strike out the side and then Alex Wood probably having the best game he's had all season one of them Five innings, five hits, seven Ks. That's just what he does. Five innings, four innings, it's about it. It's all you're going to get, Alex. But that's all they need them to do right now. Don't give up runs. Keep it close. And more often than not, the San Francisco Giants are going to win those games. 3 nothing, and huge, huge insurance runs late as it pertains to Tyro Estrada. Batting 280 still. I still think he's an all-star. I do. I think Tyro's an all-star. I think this guy, Camilo Doval, is an all-star. The one-two. Merrifield strikes out swinging. Doval, a little skip. Tyro Estrada right in the middle of everything tonight. The Giants pitch a shutout to start the road trip. 
Dave Fleming on the call there for NBC Sports Bay Area. Yes, the Giants getting it done. Good morning to all of you just tuning in here. Appreciate you if you're getting off work, getting on work, getting ready for school, getting ready to go on a trip, what have you. Appreciate you stopping on by. Be sure to download that Odyssey app as well. You can take us anywhere you need to go if you're not here in the Bay Area. Hell, take us to Toronto. It might work there. No promises. International waters are tricky, but I know it does work in international places because we're the international show here. We're Mr. Worldwide, the pregame show. Shout out, Pitbull. YouTube, Twitch, search 95.7 The Game there, and we are up and streaming. You can take us literally everywhere you got Wi-Fi because that's just the kind of people we are here at 95.7 The Game. So good morning to all of you on Twitch, on YouTube. We are up and running there. And yes, the mic is working this morning. It's great to see. We'll talk Giants. We'll talk some Warriors. Off-season getting started officially. I guess technically it's not the off-season. It's the new league years out, they call it. That's what they call it in NFL. We don't really like to call that in NBA, but legal tampering, if you will, begins on Friday. And we'll have all that coverage all day and all week right here on 95.7 The Game as it pertains to any trades, any signings, any qualifying offers, Dante DiVincenzo for the Golden State Warriors. He is opting out of that player option that he has, and he is an unrestricted free agent. You'd think he's going to command a pretty decent market elsewhere, so we'll wait and see with Dante DiVincenzo. He had a great year, I thought. Slow start, but really found himself as the year went along, and I think the addition of Gary Payton II kind of Messed things up with his role there. Didn't really know what they needed from him when he got out on the floor. His rhythm, his minutes were all askew. And he showed up in that game six in L.A. I know that. Offensively, he showed up. Can't say the same for a lot of the other players. But listen, he knew it might have been his last game in a Golden State Warriors uniform. He's like, I need to get paid. And he put up some buckets. So Dante DiVincenzo, a free agent. What's going to happen with Draymond Green? Keep talking about him. Free agent, going to test the waters. That was our conversation yesterday. Would it be a disaster if Draymond Green did not re-sign with the Golden State Warriors? We'll continue to take your calls and text as it pertains to free agency. And man, the biggest story in sports today, and it's in baseball, surprisingly. Yes, it's not Wimbledon coming up. It's not the offseason in the NFL and Brock Purdy throwing and Dalvin Cook, DeAndre Hopkins, where are these guys going? That's none of that. It's what this guy is doing down in Los Angeles. And it feels like we've become numb to it. But I'm here to ensure we do not become numb to it. That this is not just swept under the rug like, oh, yeah, this guy's pretty great, but yeah. I'm kind of over it. No, 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 no. What this man is doing down in the city of angels, down near Disneyland, is one of the most incredible, if not the most incredible thing we have seen in the history of American sports. Take it away, Shohei. Otani hits one in the air, left center field, hit well, Robert is back, so is Benintendi, it's on! Shohei Otani with his second of the night, and the Angels add to the lead, it's 3-1. Three 3-1 to one. Three to one there, Shohei gets it done, 10 punchies, 2 home runs, as the Angels improve to 44-37, and 37. they get the win over the Chicago White Sox, and don't look now, the Los Angeles Angels formerly the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, formerly the Anaheim Angels, formerly the California Angels. I personally prefer the California Angels. It just sounded cool. But I digress. 44 and 37, just five games out of first place in the AL West. The AL West is stacked. So much so. They even got the Oakland Athletics getting a dub. We'll play cool in the gang later. They deserve it. Taking out those Yankees. Get out of here. Miss me with that. Ow! 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 Sorry, Johnny boy. I hate to do that to you. You beautiful, beautiful man. 
But Shohei Otani is once again having the best season in the majors. Did it last year. Somehow didn't win the MVP because some guy broke some arbitrary AL home run record. Some guy named Judge. Psh. What's that guy done lately? I know. I'm not poking fun at his injury. I know he's been out for a few weeks. Saw him there in the dugout during that A's game. Looking massive. Also saw the Yankees taking the L. But Shohei Otani. All due respect to what Aaron Judge did last year. It's just, again, I was hammering the table for Shohei winning the MVP. And he's probably going to win again this year. And it should have been three straight. A la Nikola Jokic. And even Jokic doesn't compare to what this guy's been doing. On the mound and in the batter's box. Just look at these stats. And again, I, my job here is to not make us go numb to it. To not get Shohei fatigue. Because you should not be fatigued by what this man is doing night in and night out. You just go to the batting. <laughs> He's leading the majors in games played. Leading the majors in home runs, 28. RBI, 64. Slugging, 654. OPS, 1.039. OPS plus at 180. And total bases at 200. That's just batting. Let's go over to the pitching aspect. Seven wins, three losses. <laughs> 302 ERA. Started 16 games. 95 innings pitched. Yes, the wild pitches. Leads the majors. Hit by pitches. Also leads it. 12-9. to 9. This guy must stink. No. 127 strikeouts. His ERA plus is 143. His whip, 1.038. And this guy continues to amaze. No one can do what he does. This is like Stephen Curry going out, dropping 30. Hell, dropping a triple-double. But instead of the assists, it's the blocks. That's the equivalent. 30 and 10 blocks and 10 boards or 10 assists, whatever you want. But the blocks are a part of it. That's the equivalent. Doing it on the offensive and defensive end. Now, there's been guys like that. Obviously, Giannis. We've had Michael Jordan. Guys like that who have been elite at both ends of the court for a given season. It's happened. But that's basketball. It's different. You're constantly playing offense and defense. Baseball, you don't do that. You just don't bring players up like this to pitch and hit. Yeah, high school. College a little bit. But the majors? No. Minors? Okay. But the majors, this just doesn't happen. And I gotta wonder if we're gonna start seeing some of that trickle back into the majors. Seeing guys like this. Who's the guy Who's the guy in the Giants farm system who's supposedly supposed to be able to do this? Was, is it Reggie Crawford? Maybe I'm mistaken. Someone in the Giants minor league. I'll get Sam Lubman, producer of and host of Garlic Fries and Baseball Guys here at 95.7 The Game. Hell of a podcast. Him and Joe Shasky doing a hell of a job there producing content for this station. And he's just all over the place, Sam Lubman, when it comes to the Giants. He's at the games. He's going to A's games. He's locked and loaded into this baseball season. So you need to get his thoughts on the Giants farm system because that's going to be important. Heading into this next month, and the show hey question is going to be that. Do the Angels have what it takes this next month to stick around in the race and keep Shohei Otani? Because if they don't, if they go on a losing skid and they're six or seven games under 500, come the trade deadline, do they start taking calls on Shohei Otani? And do the Giants make that call? And I know it's early. I just said the Angels, they're in it. 44 and 37. 
It's June twenty eighth. A lot can change between now and then. Hell, got the All Star game in a couple weeks. Man, time really does fly. It's scary. But what Shohei Otani is doing, I do not want to get lost on you folks. Just how special this guy is. There's no one like him in sports. Not the Messi's, not the Ronaldo's, not the Kylian Mbappe's, not the Kevin De Bruyne's, or the Karim Benzema's, if you will. In basketball, Jokic is great. Best player in the league. Steph, awesome. Changed the game. LeBron, a marvel at this age. They're not doing what Shohei does. Different sports, different cross analogies. I get it. This guy is Babe Ruth and Roger Clemens in one. That's how good this guy is. I mean, that's hyperbole. It's fine. Sports Talk Radio. It's not going to win seven Cy Youngs or however many Roger Clemens won. I get that. The Cy Youngs are going to be harder to come by than the MVPs. But (laughs) it's just, I keep watching these guys' highlights every single day. I need to say something about it because we cannot grow numb to it. Shout out Lincoln Park. Good morning to all of you on Twitch and YouTube. Shohei. Best player in sports. Not a controversial opinion, right? Well, let's just find out. Let me go peruse the YouTube chat, the good old YouTube chat. Yes, Reggie Crawford, Giants for Life. See, when a guy named Giants for Life is hitting me up here, he knows what he's talking about. Jesus, Raymond, Nicole, EJ, Luis, Joseph. It's a great name. Morali, Sammy Wings. Appreciate all you guys chiming in. MDK1. New Yorkers already crying about the judge contract. They legitimately begged judge to come back and now crying how they could have used that money for better starting pitching. Uh, That's New York fans. They're delusional most of the time. And I'm a delusional fan as well, so I understand. But that's dumb. And Giants fans that are probably saying, oh, we dodged a bullet there and judge caught. Shut it, please. Aaron Judge would have fit in perfectly on this team. You all know it. Hell, Could have helped you in the field yesterday, probably, if he was healthy. Michael Conforto, yikes. Two plays where it's just like, ugh. And some of this bad defense just creeping in a little bit at times here at the Giants. But overall, a shutout's a shutout. It's a team win. And they got the job done in game one in Atlanta. Brandon Belt, though, a little double there at the end. Again, Conforto, make a play. But Shohei Otani, the talk of sports right now. And if he's not, he should be. The Giants, if they're going to be in it all year, and I think they are, are they going to go sniffing around Shohei and should they? I'm of the mindset they should. Shohei's that guy, even if it's for a rental. I don't care what it takes to give it up. Probably minus the guys that are playing right now. Who have we not seen? The Lucianos, the Harrisons. Okay. One of those guys and some other... Lower level prospects. I know we like to do this thing when it's, oh boy, you know, our young guys are contributing right now. You know, if, if Harrison and, and Luciano or anything like this, this, this could be a, this could be a dynasty. We're looking at, let's relax. Bailey has been having a great year. Schmidt started off hot overall, having a very, very good season. Duvall, all-star Estrada, Borderline all-star. Slump buster last night. That was huge for him. Webb, stud. Locked in. J.D. Davis, having a great time. So a lot of young pieces on this team are contributing. Lamont Wade, another young piece. Relatively. But as far as the farm guys, the Matoses, the Baileys, the Schmitz, yeah, they're pretty good. And I'm fine with keeping those guys because I know that they can produce at this level so far. But the guys I haven't seen at this level, the Harrisons, the Lucianos, eh. You can say Spadona, that's just bad business. You don't give away the future because you might be able to win just this year. Well, I'm looking around the rest of the NL. 
Who really scares you? Braves? Eh, they're good. Don't get me wrong. They're very good. Best record in the NL. They are very, very good. Matt Olson, Sean Murphy. These guys are studs. You like to build around uh, guys like that. <laughs> Matt Chapman has another guy you'd like to build around. Oh, Marcus Simeon. Oh, and I keep going on as my Oakland A's heartbreak continues. But Spencer Strider, he's a stud. But the Braves were ballers last year. And what happened? They got knocked out. As happens. It's a crapshoot, as Billy Bean likes to say, when it comes to the playoffs. And that's just an easy excuse for Billy Bean because the Oakland A's have had no playoff success basically his entire tenure. But if it's a crapshoot, if we're using that analogy, why not the Giants? I'm just looking at their record in close games as of late. It's pretty damn good. I mean, shutting out that Toronto Blue Jays team when you got the Springers, the Bichettes, the Vlad Juniors, the Chapmans, Varsho, Whit Merrifield. Like, you look up, up up and down their averages. 292, 265, 280, 263. Bichette's batting 323. Jeez. Jesus. Guy's something else, man. Slucking 513. My God. But again, yeah, he had three hits yesterday, but he didn't score. Got his. Cade Late. Tyler Rogers, come on down. This bullpen, I'm telling you, if you add some pitching around this team, and Shohei, yes, he's the Moby Dick, if you will. He's the unicorn. He's the ho-ho, shout-out Pokemon. He's the rare one. You might not be able to get him. But there's going to be names out there, a la of Shane Bieber. Lucas Giolito. There'll be names out there. And I think it's important for Farhan Zaidi, and he's going to do this, to take a good, long, hard look at this team and debate whether he thinks this team can win it all. Because that's ultimately what it's about. Can this team win it all? I think I've already moved on from this is a fun, exciting team. This is a contender. They're, I think they're legit. It's almost July now. Get to July, get back to me is what we like to say. Get to the All-Star break, get back to me. Well, the All-Star break's in a couple weeks, and this Giants team is damn near in first place in the NL West. A very, very good NL West, mind you. A lot of young talent. Arizona, we just saw them. A lot of young talent. Dodgers, they're going to do what the Dodgers do. They'll probably be in the Shohei sweepstakes. And then you got the Padres, and we'll get into them in a second. See the report? What was it, Yahoo Sports? But what's going on with the San Diego Padres? Yikes. You know, they have Eagles 2011 dream team written all over them. It was from Dan Clark. Maybe we'll just get into them now as we have a couple minutes here to break. But Dan Clark reported this. And there is tension in the Padres clubhouse, and it's rumored to be at a breaking point. With finger-pointing, strategy disagreement, and accusations of laziness and poor preparation from certain high-profile players, all common. A real lack of team cohesion. Many fear the once-hyped season is doomed. Doomed. That has a sense of dread to it. (laughs) You just look right now at the National League standings. You look at specifically the NL West. Padres are five games under. They're ten and a half back from the division lead. Got the Dodgers ahead of them, the Giants, and then the division-leading Arizona Diamondbacks. You just look at that roster, top to bottom, and they should be there. This is giving me Padres of, what was the season? God, it might have been like a decade ago. Who was it? A.J. Preller, the old GM there? But... Going for, hell, he still might be the gym. Going for BJ Upton, Justin Upton, Matt Kemp, the Hosmers. Remember that? That old dream team of the Padres, and that set them back for a long, long time. We might. We might be looking at that situation again. Now, I think 
some of the players they have on this squad are a lot better. I mean, Manny Machado, borderline Hall of Famer. Juan Soto, who's not buying stock into that guy. Tatis, still having a great year. So the individual seasons are there for these guys. But again, it's it's not just that. It takes more than individual talent. We just saw that with the Golden State Warriors this past season. It takes a team. And when there is a dark cloud over a franchise, and we're seeing that now, with the San Diego Padres, just what's being reported, that sure feels like a dark cloud of the disease of me. When a dark cloud happens, bad things follow. For the Warriors, it was their inability to come together as one on the road, which led to a poor road record, which led to a poor overall record, which led to almost being in the playing game and not even making the playoffs. And for the Padres, they're not even going to make it. Not at this point. So do the Padres end up being sellers at the deadline? I have a hard time wrapping my brain around that, but it's possible. It's absolutely possible. I don't think they're going to trade in division, but... (laughs) And it was... AJ Preller, you're right. I was like, was he the guy back then that did all those trades? He was. It was the Yasmani Grandal to the Dodgers for Matt Kemp, Tim Federovitz. Then he got the Will Myers, Ryan Hannigan. Yeah. Surrendering Trey Turner. Man, going back here. Justin Upton, James Shields. Yeah. The Craig Krimbrell experience. Man, nine years ago. And it kind of has shades of that. And A.J. Preller was the architect of that whole thing. The architect, architect. So sometimes history is doomed to repeat itself. And it may just be happening with the San Diego Padres. We're going to take a quick break. Come on back. It appears a team has been selected for hard knocks. And I think this just might be the juiciest season yet. When it comes to that, I'll explain on the other side. This is the pregame show with Joe Spadoni. 888-957-9570 is the number. If you'd like to get involved, Comcast Business Text Line. We are up and streaming on Twitch, on YouTube. Chime in there. And always be sure to download that Odyssey app, Favorite 95.7 The Game. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be right back right here on 95.7 The Game. At Fisher Investments, our clients know we have their backs. How do your clients know that? Because Fisher Investments is a fiduciary, the highest standard for a financial advisor. It means we're there for our clients and always put their interests first. So wait, you do it because you have to? No, we do it because...
Welcome back on a wacky Wednesday, a feel good ink Wednesday, apparently. It's the pregame show, Joe Spadoni. Been discussing Shohei Otani. Shohei, just the best player in all of sports right now. You have a problem with that? You can call in at 888 957 9570. Shohei Otani, best player in all of sports in the entire world. Not even close. I said it. Two home runs last night. And just 10Ks as well. Padres scuffling. Reports of me. The disease of me. That's what's happening. The season could potentially be doomed is what was it Dan Clark said doomed Victor Von doomed this is very ominous I don't know it's sports it's just funny when we use words like that just a total catastrophe an apocalyptic end to a season it's just all right it's baseball at the end of the day and <laughs> I get caught up in it too when we use terms like tremendous or massive failures of a season and this kind of would be if they didn't make the playoffs after making the NLCS last year without Fernando Tatis Jr., adding him to the lineup, obviously extending Manny Machado, making a run at Judge, not getting him, but getting Bogarts, getting all these guys, having them locked in, and then just not even making the playoffs. Now, I'm not saying the future's done for them, but this season it would just be a tremendous failure. And then Bob Melvin's got to take a good, long, hard look, and to be quite honest, the Padres got to take a good, long, hard look at Bob Melvin. That was the guy they brought in here to be the grown-up of the team, right? It's not happening. It's not happening. When you have that many egos involved, it is very difficult to thread that needle. It can be done. It can be done. You think of those 70s A's, that dynasty, one of the last great dynasties in baseball. A lot of egos on that team, Reggie Jackson being one of them. Punches thrown, fights in the clubhouse. They didn't get along. But on the field is where it ultimately matters, and they got along out there. The Miami Heat, ultimately, there was a disease of me aspect with the LeBron Heatles. LeBron didn't want Spolster in there. He went to Pat Riley, and Pat Riley's like, kick rocks, man. Ultimately, LeBron left. Heat haven't won a championship since. They've been back, sure, twice now in the last couple of years. But it's tough. The disease of me. As Pat Riley, again, just alluded to, invented that term. And what we're seeing now with the San Francisco Giants is the opposite. It's unselfishness. It's a combination of vets and young guys, but mostly young guys who don't know any better. And you have that mentality. Why not the Giants this year? Why not? At 888-957-9575. 7-0. Continue to take your calls and texts as it pertains to the Giants. They win last night 3 nothing over the Toronto Blue Jays as Joe Chasky is decked out. I love that that hoodie. I think sick. The windbreaker. You'll see it. Maybe he'll walk. He's walking over. He wants to show it off on YouTube right now. But he's not on camera over there. He can't show it off over there. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Joe Chasky. He'll join me in the next segment for the cross. Joe over. Oh, another side. He's going to do it. Here it is. Come on. Come over here. YouTube, Twitch. You can love this. There he is. Oh, show it off. The bling bling. There you go. Turn around. The big SF. I'm a sucker just for the black when it comes to the giant stuff with the orange trim. I think that's their best look is the black unis with just the standard SF orange. Those are sick. They're just classic. I'm not a big orange guy when it comes to fashion in general, but the black with the orange trim is so hard. So hard. Like the Oklahoma State when they are all blacked out, the... Baltimore Orioles. I'm just thinking of orange and black teams. There's not that many of them. Oregon State, go Beavs. You think of that, those teams. Just a great, great color combinations. Speaking of great color combinations, classics, if you will, I think the New York Jets have them. And the New York Jets, yes, are reportedly going to be the team to host hard knocks next season, whether they like it or not. Mike Florio of, uh, NBC reporting that, Mark uh, Mike Florio, our guy here at 95.7 The Game. But the Jets, yes, 
Mr. Ayahuasca himself, Aaron Rodgers, Bob Sala, Zach Wilson. They're going to show him cougar hunting out there with the real housewives of New York. Are we going to have a mashup? Can we have that? Be great. Zach Wilson. Now featured on Hard Knocks, also featuring Real Housewives of New York. Are we in or out on the New York Jets being Hard Knocks? Are you even in on Hard Knocks anymore? Because the last season I truly paid attention to, if we're going to be honest here, the last season I truly paid attention to was that Antonio Brown craziness when he was an Oakland Raider for a few months. That was the last season I paid attention to. The frozen feet, the hot air balloon, the helmet size, everything. Jonathan Abram being a rookie. Clee Furl riding horses, whatever that was. In hindsight, the best story out of that was Max Crosby. That was the guy. He was that dude. But Antonio Brown, God... Talk about things we're going to miss. We were talking about Draymond Green and missing him if he moves on because Draymond Green is such a lightning rod when it comes to Bay Area sports topics, especially in radio. Certain names in Bay Area sports, if you just bring them up, you'll just have callers left and right or texts at 888-957-9570. Draymond Green, Jimmy Garoppolo, Brandon Bell. That's the three sports. I'll toss in Antonio Brown. For that few-month period, Antonio Brown was a moment in Bay Area sports where we were discussing what that guy was doing for weeks. Recording conversations with his head coach, John Gruden, who subsequently is out of the league now, although his boy Derek Carr and Dennis Allen wanted his advice. Yikes. But when it comes to hard knocks, are we still in? Even with Mr. Ayahuasca and Aaron Rodgers and him being a Jet, was Hard Knocks even ever doing the Green Bay Packers? That's what I want to know. Did they even ever do Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay? 888-957-9570. That would have been fascinating. Because I want to get more into that fan aspect, too. I know it's about the players, but being a fan of the Green Bay Packers. Not doing anything in the cold and in the winter there. Just going to football games. Tailgating. Fascinating. 888-957-9570 as I digress here on the pregame show. Joe Spadoni, if you'd like to get involved, we are streaming live on Twitch and YouTube. Just be sure to search 95.7 The Game, like, and subscribe. YouTube chat is en fuego as it usually is. Good morning, my family, Aaron C. Alex in Atlanta. Appreciate you, Alex. The Padres have to be the most underachieving team in baseball, right? Feels like it. The Mets are up there, and the Mets owner, Steve Cohen, is apparently addressing the media today. I wonder what that's going to be about. Probably just a state of the union. I'm disappointed with how this season's gone, and -and so-and-so is going to be relieved of their duties. Is it Showalter? Is it going to be a GM? What's going to happen there with the Mets, who are, again, one of the more underachieving teams in all of baseball. Get the win yesterday, though. I would say the Padres, just because of the individual talent. But at the beginning of the year, I think it might have been Shasky and I. We were talking, and I was like, it wouldn't be that crazy if the Padres didn't make the playoffs because that's just how baseball is sometimes. And we've been talking about it this morning. Just because you have the individual talent doesn't mean you're going to win it all. Like, The Padres just did the same thing nine years ago. And their current president of (laughs) basketball, of baseball operations, A.J. Preller, was the architect of that. Kemp, Myers, Hosmer, Kimbrell, the Upton brothers. Remember that? How'd that go? It was a disaster. Set the team back for years. Set them all the way back to get back to the way we are now. Let's give all these 10-year contracts out. Bogarts, you could have one. Machado, Tatis, Soto, come on. Judge, hell, you want one? They're handing them out left and right. They just want to capitalize on their current success. They're the next hot thing. 
But in order to be the hot thing for years to come, you got to win. You have got to be a winner. Because as much as we love Shohei Otani, him being on a losing team and not being in the playoffs has hurt his brand. Now, his brand is still at an all-time high. But just think how much higher it could be in the World Series. Because we saw how massive it was in the World Baseball Classic. You kidding me? That was a moment this past year, right before the season started. Trout v. Otani, final at bat. Runner in scoring position. Maybe it was on first base. Whatever. Trout hits it. Out of the park in Marlin Stadium. It's tied. Going to extras. Like, how awesome was that? To finally see a moment with two of baseball's best players. A moment that mattered. Will we finally see that with Shohei? Will we see that with the Padres? 888-957-9570. I know we're going to see that with the Giants. I'm already saying they're a lock to make the playoffs. I'm saying it. I'm cocky. I'm going to get Joe Shasky's feel on that on the other side for the crossover. Come on back, folks. This is the pregame show with Joe Spadoni, 95.7 The Game. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with things I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of the disease called geographic...
Now, back to the pregame show on 95.7 The Game. There it is. Pre-game show. Joe Spadoni. Bila. Joe Shasky. Cross you over time. Decked out in his Giants gear. And why shouldn't he be? 3 nothing. Ho-hum. Shutting out the BGOs, the Chapmans, the Vladdy Juniors. Just another day at the office. You see my boy Giants. Posada Jr.? Ooh. You love Posada, huh? I do. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you were talking about it well, yesterday. you know why? Because I feel like Bernie Williams and him didn't get the appropriate love. Because the Jeters. Well, because no, Jeter the, was yeah, great. Because and I'm not denying that. And... Dude, Bernie Williams was so sick. And Posada was so sick. And I I, I don't know. like uh, Even Veritech. Like, I'm not a huge Red Sox fan at, by any stretch. I just feel like we sleep on catchers. Great example. Roy Campanella is one of the greatest yeah, players of all time. Campy. Right? Now, I don't know where yeah. you got him. You know, top 100, top 150. I don't know. But, like, does anyone ever, like, oh, can't feel the team without Roy Campanella? Not unless you're, like, mad dog Chris Russo. Like, people like, oh, like, yes. our dad's generation. That's the, the only thing. But Absolutely. Like, but to your point, Yogi it was actually Berra. an interesting conversation because Sam and I, and uh, E-Dog, mm -hmm. Evan Giddings, we were talking about this because you guys were talking about it on air, Bonte and uh, Shasky. Okay. You guys were talking about... You know, catchers, right? Like, is Buster Posey going to be like a Hall of Famer or something like that? And we're just looking at the numbers. It's like, it's him, it's Yachty, Yachty yep. and it's Joe Mauer. I think like, Yachty are, gets in. I think Joe Mauer should be in too. I well, think it's those three. See, Joe Mauer, I think, is the best hitter his out of all of them. Was his offense was far. elite. Like, yeah, and he's a 12, I think 12 or 13 years in the bigs. 14, I think. Was it yeah. 14? Yeah. But he played first base for a couple years. He did, years. yeah, because of the concussion. Yes, so, like, that yes. was a part of it. Yes. But it was interesting looking at the numbers because defensively, Yachty was the best out of all of them. Well, not even close. Hands down. He was the gold glover. Hands down. But the consistency on offense. And has and, the team winning. Yes, has the team winning. Buster Posey, much better hitter, though, than Yachty. So, like, I think there's a give and take there, defense, offense. But ultimately, I would value Buster's offense more than Yachty's defense, if that's fair, whatever, what have you. But I thought Joe Maurer was... At his peak, the best at both out of those three. I, now, I, I, the I longevity factor for Buster at hitting and yeah. catching that, he had that over Maurer. Yeah. So, is there a way all three get in? Probably not. Which I, mean, kind of, I, I think which there's sucks, only 20, I think there's only 20 catchers in the Hall of Fame. Which which sucks. 18 or 20, something like that. Like, that's the bad part about the Hall of Fame in baseball. Like, you guys have become so inclusive that now it's off-putting. Well, and here's the it's, problem. It's, it's off-putting. Here's the problem is that you've got the Stan Musial types, the Yogi Berry types that, that 20 years in the game, right? And so you look at their numbers, there's a prerequisite standard that must be met to get anywhere near those guys. It feels like hall. compiling, though, right? Like no, that's but what, that's, yeah. my, that's my yes. point. Like, yeah. I look at someone like Carlton Fisk, and I look at Gary Carter, and look how long their careers are. No catcher is going to play 20 years in the bigs in this era. When no. you get paid what you get paid, and we understand now the physical toll. Have you ever seen Johnny Bench's hands? Have you ever seen Johnny Bench's knees? Dude, yeah, mess up. Well, I, I met Ray Fossey once. That guy's hands, RIP. Like, they're just catcher's hands are met. They're, they're like Brian Baldinger's. They're bricks. They're just, absolutely yes. destroyed. Also, and so, he destroyed my hand by shaking it. RIP, right? No, but like, I think we've, we've, we've kind of realized, like, being in the squad for that <laughs> long, it's not good. No, it's, it's just not. not good. And so I don't, I don't see anybody having more than a 14 or 15 year run. It's just. Because of the money being what it is and us understanding what it does to your body, I just, I don't know, man. I have a really hard time. Well, you think of Yadi and Molina, who just what now retired. He's 40 years old. Like him doing it, that, like that's un like no one's doing that again, I don't think. And his body gave and out. And his body gave out. Like you might see the guys getting up there, but they're every other day. They're not everyday guys, right? They're not no. the Sean Murphys. No. They're not the hell. Maybe a Patrick Bailey. Like they're not those dudes. And then I look, I'm just looking at the stats right now. Joe found 14 years. That's so cool. He's a native of Minnesota, too. I always forget of that. St. Paul, it's Minnesota. Pretty cool. It's pretty cool. He was supposed to be legit in football, too, right? He was a two-sport guy uh -huh. that could have gone to the college. So, yeah, 14 years, 20. Yeah, he has the 2,000 hit marks, which is a big one. He has 2,100. Yeah. Yachty never got there. Uh, he's got the 143 home runs. Not big, but 306 batting average. Slugging's up. So, yeah, I think all those three of those guys should be in. It is what how, it how is. How about the I digress. for Connie last night? That's what I want to get into. That freaking He's guy. the best player in sports currently. So let me tell you And something. we forgot about it last year because Aaron Judge, oh, this is Roger Maris home run. Missed me with that crap. I was on these airways saying it should be Shohei. He you did were? what no one else does. Yeah. He throws, he hits, and he's doing again. Ten punches, two home runs. First time he's ever done that. Well, what's crazy to me is that you know, I, I get it. It's the big, so it's different. You have to specialize. But every other level of baseball. Okay, there was a kid in the other day who came in for LSU in the eighth inning. He's pitching. He's a freshman. You know what they said on the broadcast? 
Guess what position he'll be playing next year? Shortstop. Oh, my God. Okay? So every other level of baseball outside of paid, you know, minor league and major league baseball, nine times out of ten, your best player is also your best pitcher. That's going to be int- Maybe now you gave me a little nugget here and, and bear nine with, times bear out with of me. Ten. Bear with me. So on my he, team, my little team, we got a kid who's our ace ahead. in Rami, who's also slugging like 750, okay? Now, positionally, he struggles a little at third base, and I, I, I struggle finding a position for him. He's our best pitcher and hitter. Now, he's 12, but I'm telling you, every other team we face, nine times out of ten, the, the their ace, their starting pitcher, also bats first, second, or third. That's... I mean, it's like that all the way up until high school, usually, right? Even Hell, through even high col- school. Even college, as Brandon you just Bell alluded to. Brandon was Bell. a closer there you and go. a first baseman. Sean Doolittle, right, before he Buster became a closer. Posey yep. was a closer and yep. a three-hitter. There you go. Um, by the way, real quick, I had a fun little trivia question I was doing with uh, yeah. Evan Giddings yesterday. Can you name the two players to win gold gloves at two different positions? So one did it at the outfield. Craig Biggio? Nope, he did not do it. He did that. Uh, he did it. He, okay, then it's it's Robin Yao, center field and, and shortstop. Nope. What? Wow. Nope. One of them was what? a former Philly. Former Philly. One of them was an Angel. Uh, it, it's not Charlie Hustle. Nope. And the other one was a former Angel. They, ter- early two thousands. Both of these players two thousands. Garrett Anderson. Darren Erstad with Darren the Erstad, center field, right field. There you go. Yeah. And Placido Polanco. Plus, who I third brought base, up the other day. Third base, second, second base. Yeah. yeah. How he crazy used to wear is the that? ski mask. Like, I didn't realize it was wow. that rare to have it at two different BGO positions. never did it? No. No, never qualified, I don't think, for it. Because he I was, was a talk- catcher, second base, yeah. center fielder. Yeah, I was thinking about it. Like, who could do it today? Like, Mookie Betts would be one that probably well, I know could he do could it. play middle infield. Yes. Like, I, I, he I could probably a be a, a stud at both of those. Like, it's just something that's just not done. Ray Durham crazy. was a second baseman yeah. center fielder. Yeah, like you know, it, it's you'd be surprised. I think the positional versatility. You know, you're seeing all these young guys come up. Like Bobby Wood Jr. plays third, short, and second for that team. You're seeing Casey Schmidt second, third, and short. I think you're seeing more of it though, Joey. I do. You think the future? Chris is, Taylor was that way too. Yes. Do you think He's the future? Good. And it's and we're talking about Shohei and maybe and Reggie Crawford's the guy in this giant system that's like similar, yeah. right? People yeah, are yeah. saying it. Yeah. Do you think the future is not a starter like Shohei? Like I think he's a one in a million. Like he's a shooting star. Well, this I guy's have a amazing on pitching. You think they could do relief work though? Well, like that's the thing. Like do you think I could have yeah. a Doval level closer, yeah. but also a three hundred or two seventy five type hitter hear, hear every day? Hear me out on this. This is a theory. This is a working theory that I have going. I love it. I believe there's going to be one or two aces on every single team. I think the days of paying a Di Sclafani, a Sean Mania to be your fourth, fifth starter, whatever they're paying them, 13 to 17 million, it's ridiculous the money that you're giving these third, fourth, fifth starters. I think it's all going away. Think about how baseball's played now, right? My team, we play five games over a three day period. And then there are very specific pitching rules. This guy pitches 25 pitches today. He's allowed to have one day rest. He could pitch on Sunday. You pitch 40, you have to have two days. I think we're going to do patchwork rotations. So you'll have one, two, or three aces, or you know, ro- real starters, and I think everything else is going to be appearance based. Meaning, I could pitch in the second, I could pitch in the sixth. I really think tournament style pitching is going to slowly infiltrate its way into Major League Baseball, and you're already seeing it with the Giants. You're seeing it with the Giants and health. Yesterday, that hell of a job, Ryan Walker, like getting out of that situation that could have gotten away with them early, and then hey. You know what? We got to give credit to Alex Wood. Hell of a performance yesterday. That's an elite offensive lineup. I don't care what you say about their record. Maybe they're underperforming, if you will. It's a tough division. But, and the Toronto Blue Jays, man, Matt Chapman's having a year. He's in a contract here. Vlad Jr., BG, BGO's, be, or not BGO, um, BGO's whatever. Yeah. But, um, God, what am I thinking of? The, uh, Bichette. Yeah, Bo Bichette. 323. He's a baller. He's a baller. He's Three hits yesterday, but. Again, there were no runners on. They did a hell of a job yesterday. I'm calling him Splinter when he has these performances. You like that? I like Alex that. Splinter would. I like that. L- l- let me, uh, like, I want to take this out, though. When when the closer became a thing, okay, De- Dennis Eckersley and Tony La Russa really, like, pushed, Yeah, that was revolutionized. They pushed the whole yes. closer thing. Yes. And they did a great job. They, there was the Don Suttons and, and guys like that and Raleigh Fingers. Yes. and But those guys were two and three and four inning guys, depending on the situation. And But the way that Tony La Russa kind of spurned it forward, I mean, we're waiting for another evolution of pitching. It used to be four-man rotations. 
Okay, that's what the norm was. Go back to the Baltimore Orioles uh, of the 70s, right? Everybody remember four 20-game winners. Think of how far we've come. We've experimented with six-man rotations. To me, the next one is two, three guys in a rotation. Everything else is patchwork. And then I'm working my taxi squad, and I'm working availability, and I'm working the IL, meaning that seven-day slot, and I'm going to patchwork the entire rest of my of my bullpen. And to your point, it's the cost effectiveness of it too that may end up being the thing. It's like, eh, I don't want to pay Garrett Cole three hundred million dollars. Maybe I'll pay one guy like that. Okay, maybe a Garrett, but no one like okay, Logan Webb, you're making a hundred, that's fine. Everyone else, eh. 30, 40 million, that's fine. Well, and we figured out that going through the lineup three times, it's, only the elite yep. of the elite can do yep. it. Yep. So if, if we know that and it's baked into the equation, then why wouldn't you want to put your players in a in a, a, a room for success and go, hey, six outs or 40 pitches or 50 pitches, whatever comes first. And listen, it's going to be less taxing on the arms. Exactly. Like, it, like, let's face it, the injuries that we keep seeing, like the DeGroms of yep. the world, right? Yep. Like investing that much money, you think Texas is looking at that like, oh my God. Like just think if like we you like and I'm not saying they, yeah, they, yeah. they look back on it like that, but they could have used that somewhere else. They could have used that to get bullpen help. They could have get another bat. Like that's the thing going forward. It's not just the money, it's the the wear and tear on the arms for these young guys. And we we're seeing, hey, we saw it with the Stanford pitcher, Quinn Matthews. We don't want these guys throwing 150 pitches. No. No. We no. want to utilize their best one, two, three innings, and then the next guy, one, two, three innings. Now, the ace will never go away. The ace will That's never go away. That's the one thing I want to make sure I preface. Think about how basketball is now the positionless. The cream will rise, though. Like, there'll be a discrepancy. Yes. You're either an ace or you're not. Like, that's just what it's going to be. Wouldn't you agree? Because there's a middleman getting paid, too, still there, and I don't think that like Farhan yes. values that. He no, doesn't. I'm with you. Yeah. But wouldn't you agree the other sports have evolved to where positionless basketball, stretching the floor, like, we really, really, like, push the limits of trying to maximize yeah. the body and maximize the I players and the skill. I want unicorns. Exactly. Yes. Football, three wide receiver sets. Yeah. Right, the the gun run. Like, there's lots of different variations where we've tried to maximize the skill sets of what you're getting. Christian what McCaffrey. is baseball giving yeah. you right now? Well, at the lower levels, elite athleticism and guys who can throw for two or three innings, but they not maybe not necessarily can throw seven innings. You're not getting those guys coming through. No, no. You know what I'm getting uh, coming through next? It's Joe Shasky and Bonta Hill in the morning roast, 95.7 The Game. You're listening to 95. 95-